Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about functional programming. Now, when you talk about programming languages, let's say Java, C Sharp, C, C++, all these languages have a different programming styling. Example, Java, C Sharp, they are object oriented. On the other hand, we have Python, JavaScript. They are functional programming which supports objects. So you can say they are both basically, they support functional programming and they, they support object oriented programming. And then we have a language like C which supports procedures. Now when you say Java, Java is object oriented, right? But then we got Java 8 where we got functional programming. Now, what exactly this means? When you say a language is object oriented and a language is functional, what's the main difference? Now, when you say object oriented, the main thing there is objects. Example, when you learn Java, the most important thing is object, right? Because that's what we learn. We learn the entire concept of OOPS, where we have objects, classes, inheritance, polymorphism, and different stuff, right? So the main thing is object. If you want to do something, it should be an object. Now, if you think about the object, object is something you can assign to a variable. So example, if I open Eclipse, what you can simply do is you can, let's say if you have a class here and if you have a class A, and you can get a class A object here, you can say new A. Now this object can be assigned to a variable. So first thing, you can assign an uh, object to a variable. The variable type will be of type A, but OBJ is a variable and you're assigning the object to it. Second, you can pass the object to a particular function. So let's say in this, uh, you have a separate class here, which, which is class B. And in this, you have a method which is static, void, something, which takes the object of A. So let's say if I say B dot something, and you can pass the object of A. So that means you can basically pass the object to a particular function or a method. Uh, okay, so that's two things. So we can, uh, we can assign the object to a variable. We can pass the object. In fact, you can also return the object. So here, example, let's say I don't want to return void. I, can, I want to return object of A. Uh, we can do that. We can return this object as well, right? So that's why we say objects are very important. And we can normally call them as the first class citizens of a language. Uh, so object in Java is the first class citizen and that's why we say it's an object oriented programming. On the other hand, when you say Python is a functional programming, which means that's, that's right, functions are the first class citizens. To understand that, let's take an example here. So I'm using an online compiler for Python. You can use any compiler you want. So let me just, uh, so I'm going to this website onlinejdp.com and if you run this code, whatever they have, which is hello world, it is working. So let's remove that. So what I want to do now now is I want to perform simple operation just to understand how function works in Python. So what I will do is I will create a very simple function here which is dev and we'll say div, div, uh, div function and it will take two parameters as we expect. So we'll say int i and int j and here I just want to return, I'll perform the operation which is a i divided by j. Okay, so that's that's the operation we have and if you want to call this function, what you would do is you have to say div. So we can accept the value here, right? So we can say result equal to and you will say div and then you can pass two values, let's say five and two. So you, you want to divide these two numbers and once you got the answer you can simply print the, the value of here so you can say print result so basically what we're doing is we're getting a function a very simple function which takes two parameters and then you perform the operation you return the value and then that value goes into result and when you print the result you will get the value which is 2.5 in this case okay so we got a syntactic error here because uh, when you switch between two languages that's the mistake you make so basically we don't have to mention int here let's remove that so we can say ing and when you run this code uh, you can see will be got 2.5 so that perfectly works so we got a function we are performing the operation we got the value and we are printing it so when you say it's a functional programming which means you should be able to assign the function to a variable and then we can do that here so let's say i have another another variable here which is abc and i want to assign the function div to a, to a variable abc so we are assigning a function to a variable now and then using this variable you can use that abc to perform the operation so instead of calling div you're calling abc function and then I hope it will work. Let's run this code and it works. You can see that we can assign a function to a variable and you can make that variable as a function. So that's one thing. So th this is working. The second thing I want to do is I want to return the function from a function. Can we do that? So let's say I have another function here, which is def and we'll name this as calc and we'll say i comma j. And then in this calc, I want to perform the operation, the same operation, I want to divide two numbers. But then instead of doing that here, what we can do is we can return the function itself. And yes, we can do that. We can return the function. So now when you call calc, it will call div and it div, the, div will perform the operation. It will give the value. The important thing is you can return the function, right? Uh, so let's, let's try this. So instead of calling ABC now, let me just call calc and let's not use this. And if you run this code, you can see we got 2.5. So yes, you can also return a function 
function from a function now why you will do this here so let's let's say i want to perform the operation of division and when you perform when you call division directly you're not calling calc this time and when you pass a value like five and zero so of course it will give you the runtime error which is a uh, division by zero we don't want that so if, if you pass zero it should print the output as zero that's the requirement we have yes i know it's a wrong answer uh, when you divide the number by zero it should print infinity but in this case let's say that it should print zero uh, let's not let's not do that zero so if you have a denominator as zero i will make it one that's what i want to do so we can do that here so we can check if j is equal to equal to zero in this case i will make the value for j as one so we are simply changing the value of j in case there's a if, if you're passing zero so you can see you will get oh we are still calling div it should be calling calc let's run this code and you can see we got the answer right so if your denominator is zero it will make it one that's our requirement uh, so that's how you can return a function from a function so we have done that we have assigned a function to a variable then we have returned a function from a function now can we pass a function to a function so let's try that so what I will do here is let's say I have uh, def and then I will create a function which is do something and then this do something will take three parameters uh, the two initial values i and j and then it will also accept some operation I know I don't know what this operation is let's try let's see what happens now here I want to say time it I will say pass because I don't want to define it as of now what I want to do is I'm mean, say result I want to call this do something function by passing three things the first one is the numerator I mean the first value number second is also number this time we'll say two and the third parameter I want to pass is a function itself let's pass calc can we do that the answer is yes in functional programming you can pass function as well so we are passing a function to a function and then this op will accept that function and then here we'll say op because that's a function now which can take two values which is i and j and yes since cal can to take two parameters this op can also take two parameters and now we can simply return the operation so we are doing both here we are accepting a function and we are returning a function uh, let's run this code let's see what happens and it works can you see that that's what makes python a functional programming because you are treating function as a first class citizens right so that's the difference between functional programming and object oriented now when you switch back to java what do you think can we write functional programming in java as well and the answer is yes in java 8 we got it right so we, we can do functional programming in java 8 now and to achieve that let's write a code in java so what i will do now is i will remove this class i don't want these two classes here so in java 8 we got this amazing feature which is lambda expression and to achieve lambda expression we need an interface we'll say interface calc of course you can have any interface doesn't matter and in this interface i want to perform some operation it can be addition subtraction division doesn't matter and it will take two parameters I will say int i comma int j I just wanted to have the same operation in Python and Java as well so we got an interface which has this operation as a method and now what I want to do is I want to call so let's say I have another function which is public or I will say method this time so I will say another method which is public void or maybe public static int and the method name would be do something the same thing we have done in Python so we'll say do something and here I will say int n1 comma int n2 and I want to pass a function can we do that uh, let's let's try so time and i will say calc and i will say return and i want to perform some operations i will say calc dot operation so you can see i'm passing three things basically now n1 n2 and calc and we don't know what that calc will do as of now but we are passing calc and i'm passing two values here so i have to say n1 and n2 so we are performing an operation by passing n1 and n2 but how do we call it how do we call do something so i will go back here and say uh, in fact it will return a value so i will say system dot dot print ln i will say do something or maybe you know what i will do is i will accept the value in int i will say result equal to and after some time i will print i mean in the next line i will print the value for result but then what this result will do so this will call do something and then in do something you have to pass three things right the first one is the two first two is value so i will say phi and two the next one is the operation so what i will do now here is i will say i comma j arrow it looks like a function right and we are passing a function this looks like a function this is the lambda expression uh, this is a function which takes two parameters it it returns the value which is i divided by j so we are passing a function to a function right that's what makes java as functional programming okay let's 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 run this code let's see if that, if that works and you can see we got the output but the question is is it really functional programming see there's a difference between it looks like a functional programming and second it is a functional programming so when you say python javascript they are functional programming but java is object oriented 
but you can use functional styling here. So yes, it looks like a functional programming, but it's not because whatever you're passing here is not actually a function. It's an object, right? Because you're passing the object of calculator. Now, if you don't know what Lambda is, I have a video in the description here. You will check that. You will understand what Lambda expression is. But if you want to understand here, so what we are doing is we are passing the object of calculator, something like this. I was, I'm saying calc, 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 new calc. And since calc is an interface, I have to use anonymous class to implement that. Uh, and then in this anonymous class, we have to get a function, which is operation, right? Define, we have to define that. I will click here and I will say implement all the methods. In this case, we have operation. And here we have to perform the operation, which is I divided by J, right? And then once you got that, instead of passing the method or the function, I'm passing the calc object. So you can say I'm passing the calc object and then I'm accepting it here. It's just that in Java 8, we got this feature by saying functional programming, which means you can reduce the boilerplate code. You can remove that and you can give in fact, uh, in the video, I have explained it in detail, but here just to just because of we, ha we are running short of time, I'm doing it quickly. So that's the functional styling, right? For Lambda expression. In fact, uh, this is not composite, so we can remove that. This is not composite, we can remove that. And even this is not compulsory, the return one, we can remove that. And the backets are not compulsory, so we can remove that. So you can see we can remove so many things here. And that's what is Lambda expression is here. So you can see we are applying a function to a variable, right? So this is a function and we are applying that to a variable. So this is what makes Java a functional styling but not functional programming, right? So yeah, so that's the difference between functional programming and, and object-oriented programming. So I hope you got some idea between functional and object-oriented programming. I'll let you know in the comment section and do subscribe for, for the video. Bye-bye.